What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 109 on the, the days right before the Marine Corps birthday. We just completed class 011 of the project. It was freaking awesome. And that's actually what we're going to talk. I want to talk to you about today is really my number one lesson, my number one takeaway that I relearned during this project. And we're going to give you some examples and talk about uh, some, some deep, dark secrets from childhood that were brought back up in my head as we start thinking about what is what was this number one takeaway that I kind of relearned this round, class 11, constantly learning. Listen, I'm getting as much of these classes of the project that as the, the candidates that are coming through and the graduates that actually make it through, I'm getting just as much or more out of these classes than, than the candidates themselves. So this is Steve Says, episode number nine, 109. Today, I'm going to share the stories of failure, adversity, and obstacles from my, my personal life, some of that I've never even talked about or shared before. And this is off of what I, what I came to think about after the project and my biggest takeaways that I kind of relearned from the project. Basically, the question I have for you today is, how do you respond when shit goes sideways in life? Like, do you stumble? Do you freak the fuck out? Or do you exploit that and turn it into an opportunity? That's what we're going to talk about. Steve says, as you know, is not always what you want to hear, but it's what you fucking need to hear. Some people will hate, but most can relate. And Steve says, is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so that you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms once and for all. This is all about the mind, the body, and your business, specifically talking about the mind, on the mind side of things. And listen, if you if you saw the live show yesterday, that was Steve Knows. That's on the business. Today is about the mind. Thursdays is about the body with health and fitness and nutrition. So it's all three pillars of the operate to dominate coaching. And really, when it comes down to the project, that's also the fitness, the finances, and really the f- faith. And then on the family side, we do a, a live show on Wednesdays with the kids that's breaking the cycle and a live show with the Russian, the Russian and the freak. Those are the two family based shows just covering all the freaking bases. What's up crawl over on the Facebooks and Mueller. We got some project graduates here tuning in. So you'll definitely get get some good value out of this and refreshers from your own class of the project. But I want to talk about the, the number one thing and the number one takeaway that I got from this class of the project. And before I tell you what that is, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Do you prepare for the worst? I know you've probably heard the, the saying, expect the best, prepare for the worst. Do you actually prepare for the worst? Are you prepared for the worst? Mentally, physically, fucking emotionally, financially, are you prepared for the fucking worst? Are you prepared for the struggle, the adversity, the obstacles? And on top of that, what adversity have you had to overcome in your life? Put, put it down in the comments below. Send me a private message. Let's talk about it. What's some of the adversity you've had to overcome in life? And are you still here? Look at that, motherfucker. You're still here. Holy shit, you're still here. Then I want to ask you, do you have the skill to turn every obstacle, turn it from a stumbling block into a stepping stone? I don't remember who first said that. I didn't create it, but whatever. I also didn't create the push-up, but I could fucking do push-ups with you and help you do push-ups even better. So basically... Do you have the skills to turn obstacles into opportunities? Keep, I want you to keep that. Re- remember that. O T O O T O two O. Obstacles to opportunities. That is really the biggest takeaway. The re- the thing that just was burned into my soul, into my bones, and brought so many ideas and so many thoughts in the project about things that seem like they suck, things that seem like adversity, things that seem like a struggle, like stress, like anxiety, like fucking pressure. Like bad fucking experiences from your past. Like boo fucking who, poor little me, little child. And taking those things. How could I not only take those things and say, oh, whatever it is, what it is. But how could I take those things and flip the script on it? Flip the script and flip the fucking switch to turn it from an obstacle to an opportunity. Flip the switch to take t- suffering becoming your superpower. From suffering to superpower. Think about that. The shit that you think is the worst actually turning into the fucking best that's going to propel you forward rather than being a crutch or a self-limiting belief or a fucking iron ceiling over your head that you're stuck below and you can never make it make it past. Think about that. 
Like that is so, there's something so fucking deep and powerful in that shit when you can live like that, when you can operate like that. And that is how you operate to fucking dominate is when you could take every obstacle and turn it into a fucking opportunity. That's the way you need to think. That's the way you need to operate. That's the way you need to just approach and attack everything that comes in your path, everything that comes in your way. So let's reverse engineer this. Let's go backwards a little bit. What is an obstacle? Obstacles are hardships, a hurdle, a stumbling block. It could be an interruption. It could be a distraction. It could be a person. It could be a situation. It could be your environment. Your environment could be your obstacle. A person could be your obstacle. A situation that you're stuck in can be your obstacle, but also a distraction. You don't realize distractions are usually your biggest fucking obstacles. Also interruptions. Uh, Anything that hinders your progress is a fucking obstacle. And what better way, and if you never been into Stoic philosophy, some of the best quotes of, of Stoic philosophy is about dealing with obstacles, about dealing with the bullshit, the hardships in fucking life. The, the first, the main one that comes to mind is from Marcus Aurelius. He said, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Like that alone right here, we could just end this fucking show right here if you could let that drill into your head. But I want to share some stories that 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 talk about that, that go deeper into that. Because you need to think about that. The imped- impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes way. There's some fucking power to that. There's some deep shit to that. Turning obstacles to opportunities. Suffering to superpowers. Another, another quote, also from Marcus Aurelius, says, Just as nature takes every obstacle, every impediment, and works around it, turns it to its purpose, incorporates it into itself, so too a rational being can turn each setback into raw material and use and use it to achieve its goal. Like so you could take the material of everything in your path, everything, every obstacle you think is in your way and turn it into a raw material to use it to achieve your goal, to help it, to flip the script, to, to flip the script in your head, to flip the fucking switch and turn it into a goal. Another quote also from Stoic philosophy from Seneca says, to bear trials with a calm mind, robs mis- misfortune of its strength and burden. Like, just calm conquers chaos. C, C, C. Calm conquers chaos. Remember that. That's how you deal with fucking obstacles and turn them into opportunities. To bear trials with a calm mind, robs misfortune of its strength and burden. Another one, also from Seneca. And that's why it's, it's this is such a huge topic in in. Stoic philosophy, and if you go back, all the personal development you see these days in the books, and pretty much every one of these books, in some way, can be traced back to some some quotes, some books, some writings from thousands of years ago of fucking dudes in, in robes and sandals that were really setting the tone for all the personal development that you see today. Another one from Seneca says, No man is more unhappy than he who never faces adversity, for he is not permitted to prove himself. That's some fucking powerful shit. Till you're able... To really be thrown into the fire, to be thrown into the, the thrown in with the wolves, you'll never know who the fuck you are. You'll never know what you're made of. You never know what the fuck you're actually capable of in this world. That's what we do in the project: is to put those obstacles, put the fucking chaos, put the adversity, and throw into it, and just make it a fucking wild ass storm, and see how you're going to survive. How are you going to react? How are you going to respond? How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to step the fuck up and show the world, and more importantly, show yourself? who you are, what you're capable of, what you're made of, what is your true potential. Think about that. Another another one is, I judge you unfortunate because you never have lived through misfortune. You've passed through life without an opponent. opponent. No one can ever know what you're capable of, not even you. If you haven't been through any struggle, you haven't been through, through any sacrifice, you haven't been through any suffering or hardship or fucked up shit in your life. Literally, you've been robbed of the of the toughness, the mental toughness it takes to get there. Believe it or not, we always have a percentage of the men that come into the project that come there because their life was too easy, too average, too smooth, too mediocre. They had such a great childhood that it made it a bad adulthood, if that makes sense, because they never had those fucking trials to test themselves against, those struggles to fight and, and get toughened and hardened from and build that fucking armor, that bulletproof impenetrable armor. Think about that. So those are the obstacles. What about opportunities? What is an opportunity as we reverse engineer this whole fucking thing? 
Opportunities are an appropriate or favorable time or occasion. That's what an opportunity is. A situation or conditional condition favorable for attainment of a goal or a good position, a chance for advancement or success. Hope and freedom is opportunity. This is what it is. Or possibilities. This is also pos- opportunities are possibilities. So think about that. Taking the obstacles, turning them into opportunities and that fucking exploding into multiple possibilities and different perspectives in life and and then taking those and exploiting them capitalizing on them taking advantage of it manipulating the fuck out of a an an obstacle of of the suffering and turn it to a superpower like there is something that makes you unfucking beatable but when you have makes you makes you never have a bad day this is the secret to never having a bad day people ask me what do i do when i'm down when I'm out, when I'm having a bad day. You know what? I tell them I don't have bad days. And it's not some macho, Marine Corps, whatever bullshit. It's just meaning I never have a bad day because you turn those things and you turn it into a material for your own good, for your own benefit. How can you flip this script? How can you flip the switch to turn it in a different direction, to reframe it in your head, to apply it, to make use of it? Don't put it to the waste. Don't don't put any struggle or adversity to waste or or fucking disaster. It's a waste to just let it sit there and stew over it and 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 let it just dig into your bones and bring you down and drag you down. Even if you fuck something up, make a wrong decision, fail. If you fucking fail, no such thing as fail. You either win or you learn, as my Navy SEAL partner Ray Care says. Failure is just fucking feedback. If you aren't fucking dead. You're not harmed unless you think that you're harmed. You're not hurt unless you think you're hurt. It's not a failure unless you call your feel like a failure. One day, you're going to laugh at the failures you had. One day, you're going to say, thank God this happened to me. Not, oh, fuck, this happened to me. Thank God this happened to me because it made me who I am. It gave me these skills. It made me tough and made me be able to deal with the next thing that's coming. Because guess what? Whatever you're going through right now that you think is so fucking hard and so difficult... The next thing that comes is going to be 10 times worse than this, 10 times tougher than this. So everything you're going through, just look at it from the lens of this is my fucking training grounds. This is my training grounds. Thank God this happened to me. Not, oh, fuck, this happened to me. That's what you need to be thinking about. So put in the comments or even send it to me. What are what are some of the adversities that you've had to overcome? What are some of the failures that, that you've had that you have years later realized that those those sufferings and those failures were actually just your something you turned into a superpower or a skill or even a business. Think about it. I, I literally have turned the failures in my life to, to several different very successful businesses from learning from those things. Failure is fucking feedback. From learning from those things, those mistakes, those fuck-ups, those fucked-up things that happened to you, whatever else. And actually flipping it and turning it into a business. Imagine that. Turning it into a passion. Into a success story. That's a fucking, that's the American dream right there. Like you hear all the time, those successful entrepreneurs that showed up on a, on a boat as, from, from a different country into the United States with just a, a couple pennies in their fucking pocket. Think about that. What have you overcome? What have you overcome? So much fucked up things have, have if I, th- I started thinking when we, when we were administering the project on these these gentlemen and they're crawling through the pit and, and I'm, I'm, I'm helping them reframe it about how fucking lucky you are to be here, that you're capable of being here, that you're capable of doing this. It's a fucking privilege to be here. This suffering is your superpower. Like you need to let that sink in. You can't be fucking defeated. You can't be beaten. You can't lose. You can't fucking fail. It's a powerful fucking thing and it's a priceless thing. And started as we're as we're doing this stuff, and, and and you go into this space, this deep dark place, and start reflecting on stuff. And I start journaling, and I start writing and writing. I'm, I'm writing about when I was in elementary school in, in the in the second grade, and we get, used to get free lunches because my family was too poor. The school would give us free lunch, and in the beginning of the day, everyone would be sitting in the cafeteria waiting for, to go to class. It's like when you're waiting for school to start, and they would call all the kids up for free lunch. They would yell, call their names out. Out loud in front of the whole fucking grade, or I think it might even been the whole school, calling the names out of all the kids that had free lunch, had to come up and get their pass for their free lunch. Like, how fucked up is that? How stupid are they to do shit like that? No wonder I used to have to throw desks at kids that would talk shit. 
or I, I, and, and I'm just going all over the place with the different thoughts because I'm having flash. I'm remembering what I was thinking about, what I journaled about on the, on the time in between evolutions in the project, the notes I was taking, the stuff that popped in my head, how I failed the, the psychological test to get into the police force when I came out of the Marine Corps and didn't get hired and thought it was the end of the world. Because when I was a kid, I thought I was going to be a cop. And I failed the test. First, I failed the fitness test. because Not the fitness test, but the health, whatever the fuck it's called. Because they said that I was obese. I was over the height and weight standards to become a cop. Believe that. Believe it or not, I was 23 years old. Probably in better, a little bit better shape now, but it, pretty much the same shape I'm in now, 20 years ago. And they told me I was over the height and weight standards to become a cop. So I, I couldn't get hired. I was considered obese. I had to get all kinds of sonograms on my heart and all this stuff. And whatever. Then after that, made it through that hurdle. Thought, oh good, now I can become a cop. Failed the fucking psychological test. What a shocker right there, huh? Failed the psychological test. So I could be in the Marine Corps, shooting guns, throwing fun grenades, automatic 50 cal, cal fucking machine guns, but too crazy to be, a, to be a cop. And too fat to be a cop, apparently. At the time, it's like, what the fuck? It's a test that only came out every four years. It was like a, it was like a two and a half year process that I went through with all these different tests and all these different, showing up to all these interviews and meetings and all this other shit. Like, holy fuck. Fuck, why did this happen to me? Fast forward 20 years later, fucking thank God this fucking happened to me. That is an obstacle turned into an opportunity to say, all right, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to get into the fitness industry, which is what I did, which led into coaching, which led into higher level coaching that we do now on the project and one-on-one private coaching in Operate to Dominate, OTD in your mind, your body, and your business. The gyms closed down. Corona. Little secret is the year of the beginning of 2020 in our yearly meeting, yearly family meeting, thought, you know what? By the end of this year, we're either going to close or sell this business. One or the other, because there's something else bigger and, and greater out there. So we're going to close it or sell it. We've done all we could do. We've dominated in the fucking industry for a decade. It's time to move on to some bigger and better things. Either going to sell it or just close it. Fucking Corona happens three months later. Oh, shit. Why did this have to happen to me? It's such a struggle in business. Or fuck yeah, thank God this happened to me because this was the plan and now it's just going to be a smooth transition into online coaching and into higher level, one-on-one, personal development, peak performance coaching, which we've transitioned to. And all the fitness and nutrition stuff is strictly online, strictly automated, and it's fucking awesome. Think about that. Like, turn the worst fucking possible case scenarios, the suffering, the sacrifice into a motherfucking superpower it is magic. It's magical when you could think like that. You could, you could take everything in that, in that quote from earlier. Turn any obstacle into a ma- the material for your own progress to move forward towards your goals for those opportunities. It's, it's fucking, it's a powerful thing and it's a skill and it's a superpower. Should have, and I started thinking then into the military. What obstacles, what things that seemed like they sucked in the military and coming up on the Marine Corps birthday and then the next day, Veterans Day here coming up is you really start to appreciate the military. And when you're in the Marine Corps, you're in there and it seems like it sucks and you're suffering and shit is hard and, and, the, and the more shit suffer, sucks, the higher your level of sarcasm in. Like the higher the suck factor, the higher the sarcasm factor. That's the way you dealt with shit. That's why now that gave me the superpower to deal with fucking anything and just crack a joke and make a joke out of it. And have a sense of humor. Make motherfuckers laugh. Even sometimes it might be a sick, twisted sense of humor. Like over the top fucking just sick and wild and crazy and fucking whacked out of your mind sense of humor and sarcasm. But that is a superpower. That's a superpower that came from those things going on in the Marine Corps. The bigger the struggle, the more fun it was, which makes everything fucking easy now. It's reframing shit in your head about shit, making everything fun. Everything is part of your fucking personal playground. Everything becomes easy. That in the military, the, the, the SOP, standard operating procedures. Shit. Strategies and tactics I learned in the military about SOPs, I now use to help teach massive businesses and companies with the LTD, leadership and team development training we do, and the one-on-one private coaching in OTD, getting paid literally thousands of dollars an hour to teach stuff that I thought sucked in the military. But luckily, I was fucking paying attention to take those lessons. Also in the, in, the, in the Marine Corps, you had to figure everything out. You had to always figure shit out. F-I-O, figure it out. 
You would be in the worst conditions, the worst equipment, the worst timing, the worst everything. And you had to figure it out. That is a fucking superpower now as an entrepreneur, as an adult in this crazy fucked up world. And these are all things that I've turned not only into a, a superpower and into an opportunity and into possibilities, but actually into seven figure businesses. This is what we're talking about. This is That's the ultimate level of turning op- obstacles into opportunities. Suffering into superpowers. You can turn into a business, into a passion that you fucking can dive all into. That's what makes you different. It makes you stand out above the rest. We talked about that on, on Steve Knows just yesterday. The structure and the discipline in the military. The way you onboarded in the military and went step by step through things. Simple, clear instructions. Repeated over and over, walking you through stuff. The way the military has leadership at every level. Shit, even the fighting, the combat, the guns, the pewter sticks, the sand pits. That's the stuff we're talking about. Those are, the, the, even the drilling, with the attention to detail and the perfection in the drilling and making your, your, your fucking racks. The things that seem like they suck so bad. What skills? Like if you take those, you could turn those and monetize those fucking skills. If you start thinking about it the right way, think about it. Climbing, it, it, dig, it, deal, dealing with a sand pit outside of every fucking building in the Marine Corps. And now that's exactly what I do. Instructing the project is those exact skills, the way to run that, the way to approach that, the way to deal with that mentally, physically, and emotionally on a program that costs $12,000 per person. Talk about monetizing some fucking what seem like low-level skills and turning them into high-level coaching Skills, monetizing that shit. Business. In, there have been so many things in, in, in business, in the gyms that seem like horrible things. There have been coaches that screwing the clients. Yeah. Coaches that are screwing multiple clients. Having people find out about it. There are, are coaches that steal clients. And it's and it's like, oh fuck, why did this why is this happening to me? This coach is such a scumbag. He stole the clients. Yeah, they're a scumbag. Yeah, they have no morals and ethics, but whatever. They're doing their own thing. They're doing what they think is gonna help them out. Whatever. If they're that desperate to do it, then whatever. But what did that do? That makes you think on a different level. Okay, what made these fucking clients stealable? You gotta think on a whole nother level. This is gonna make you even better. Something bad, an obstacle, a fuck up, an adversity, a scumbag, a backstabber turns you into a much better coach, a much better leader, a much better fucking entrepreneur, a much better fucking human by taking the nastiness and saying, okay, how could I be not like him? Think about that. Or so many different examples. It, and, and even with employees that do, other employees do, do slimy, stupid shit. You take those things and you use them as coaching examples, training examples, things that I use now to coach massive companies with thousands of employees around the country and around the world. Fucking think about it. Shit that happened that people thought, like, thank God those fucking people were scumbags because they're teaching me the skills and I'm actually turning that stuff into processes and systems I'm going to fucking monetize for a hundred times more value than, than it was in the first place in the first original business. Like taking fucked up things that happened in one business and learning from it, modifying it, turning it into a coaching opportunity to coach the fuck up out of other people so it doesn't happen to them, making me money for teaching it, saving them tens of thousands of dollars for implementing it. Like taking each, literally each stupid thing that would happen with a, a client, a coach, a, or an employee, a, a trainer, whatever, and taking them and making them into laws, making them into rules, making them into examples that you can live by and use to help you deal with future similar situations. Like there is an opera fucking tunity in everything, in everything. There's even scumbag clients out there. Scumbag clients that need to be fired. Scumbag clients that need to be fired. I've fired many clients before in all different businesses. Just ones that you don't want to work with that are just toxic cancerous to the rest of the business. Losing a, a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars from one person per month is worth it if they're going to be so cancerous to lose you tens of thousands of dollars a month by the cancer they're spreading and the negativity and the bullshit. So having a client who is just the biggest piece of shit and spreading all kinds of toxicity. There's actually a situation that happened with a, a, a client in, in our gym years ago that I've now taken that and turned it into an entire presentation on how to control your emotions. 
I have taken that situation that seemed like, oh my God, this is so horrible. It's going to be devastating to your business. It's just so horrible. So much gossip and bullshit and scumbaggery and backstabbery and, and just uh, scumbag motherfuckers. Taking that and turning it into an actual presentation that I've now taught and coached and trained and been paid to teach to tens of thousands of people over the last five, four or five years. Literally. Literally taking one situation, turning it into a massive presentation, massive entire framework and system to operate by to control your fucking emotions when it comes to business and life and personal and professional life that I have now taught, and I just taught it this weekend during the project, to literally over the, over the time that I've done it, both online, in front of audiences, in crowds, in masterminds, in coaching groups, in one-on-one, in leadership and team development when we travel around the country, literally it's now in the tens of thousands of people that have, have, have been in this presentation from this one incident. That's taking something and blowing it the fuck up and turning it into a superpower. O, O2O is a superpower. Turning obstacles to opportunities is a fucking superpower. Having a shitty childhood is a superpower. Taking that suffering of a shitty childhood, of, of the... Learning how to be a super dad, having a, sh- having a shitty childhood teaches you, okay, don't do that. Check. Opposite of that, check. Let me do this. Check. Teaches me exactly how to be as a dad, how to be a super dad. This take a, listen, you, you could have a crackhead for a, 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 a mother and use that as an excuse to either be a crackhead or use an excuse to not be a crackhead. The best revenge to get in your enemy is to not be like them. Another quote from Stoic philosophy. It's, it's crazy, but you could take pretty much anything fucked up and somehow flip the motherfucking script. Obstacle to opportunity. O to O. Suffering becomes your superpower. That's the way you need to think. That was the biggest take home as I saw and hear the stories of, of men bec- getting vulnerable as they're broken down physically and being built back up, breaking down to have breakthroughs and built back up mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, financially. It's a fucking powerful thing. And realizing all the shit that they thought was fucked up, now coming out of it only only a few days later, like, holy shit, this is empowering. This is a superpower. I, I can't be fucking stopped now because those things that were holding me back no longer exist. Not only do they no longer exist, I'm not just saying, oh, it is what it is. I'm not just accepting it. It's much further than acceptance. It's, I'm going to use this as substance, as material to fucking propel me to the fucking moon, to the next goal, to the next fucking outcome that I'm looking for, to my higher calling. And I'm going to monetize this shit. That is some powerful shit. That's some unbeatable, unbreakable, bulletproof, impenetrable shit when you could do this stuff we're talking about. It's all about your perspective. It's all about reframing shit. It's all about how you deal with shit, how you react to it, that time in between the stimulus and the response. That billionth of a second is the difference between the, between the crackhead and the fucking millionaire. That's the difference between failure and success. Mediocre and motherfucking awesome. That is the difference. So share some of your stories here. How have you turned obstacles into opportunities? What's some adversities you've dealt in your life that now have turned into either a, a learning lesson or even a monetized fucking business you're making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars off of some shit you thought was fucked up. How did you flip the script? What did you do? When did you flip the switch? Tell me your story. Share it. I want to hear about it either in the comments or if you want to, just send it to me privately, a uh, private message. Let's talk about it. And if you need some help in how to do this, how to think like this, how to operate like this, we have a free webinar coming up this Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific. It's the OTD, Operate to Dominate, in your mind, your body, and your business. And we're going to do a deep dive into all the areas. How to have discipline, energy, confidence, be an action taker, and have your freak freedom and live as your freak motherfucking self. All those things in your mind, all those things in your body, and all those things in your business. We're going to hit all three of those pillars, mind, body, and business. Talking about discipline in all three of those. Energy, confidence, be an action taker, a risk taker, a bold move maker by being your freak fucking self and living life on your own terms and operating to dominate in the mind body business. So if you want some information on that, send me a message. I'll send you a link to get registered for the webinar, the free webinar. And listen, this is the stuff we're going to be going over in this webinar that we do with high-end coaching clients that, that 
charge, we charge thousands of dollars per hour, per hour to get this type of information. And this is going to be completely free this Thursday. You're not going to want to miss it. And it's also going to be open Q&A and coaching at the end of the webinar. So you don't want to miss this. This is your opportunity to get some individualized attention. We're keeping the group very small so that you can get tons of personal attention in there and and one-on-one attention and a little bit of coaching in there in the areas that you need in your help with your mind, body, business. I will see you then. That's this Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And if you need any help and I want some higher level coaching, let's talk about the OTD one-on-one peak performance, personal development, accountability coaching. We could talk about that. And I've been talking a lot about here about the project. If you want to get involved with the project, it's a four-day personal development program here for men. It sells out months in advance. The next classes coming up are in February, in, in April, and in June. We're taking registration for all three of those. February is pretty much sold out. But let me know if you want any on that. That is a four-day personal development program for men only. It's an in-person, live, four-day event here in California. It is the highest level, most highly immersive personal development experience that men could have to make you an even better husband, even better father, an even better leader, entrepreneur, and even better fucking man. So if nothing else, I will see you this Thursday for the live webinar on the Operate to Dominate in your mind, your body, and your business, a free two-hour webinar, high-end coaching. It will, will be involved, so you don't want to miss it. I will see you then. Send me a message if you want information on that. I'll send you the link to get registered, and I will see you then. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.